welcome everyone. Yes. Welcome to series six, Space for Women show, Space Careers, how you can propel humankind towards its interstellar greatness, starting with a CV. Series six is in align with SDG four on quality education and SDG eight on decent work and economic growth of the sustainability development goals, goal agenda for 2030, with the aim of further contributions to empower youth and adults with essential skills to meet the aerospace industry with STEM related fields to better support the career path of the future space generation of the space age arising. Within the space industry, we encourage you to think imaginatively to build a better future for Earth and for the future space age. So we all know there are opportunities for engineers, mathematicians and physicists, as well as biologists and medical professions and professional specialists in policy and law development, as well as good opportunities for writers and other creative experts. We have all taken very different career routes into the space field as part of a futurist community that is enjoying, joining together today to build a better world together with space cap capabilities development. So our role today is to really empower the equal participation of women and men in space careers as their equal participation in the space industry is a necessary foundation for a peaceful, prosperous, and sustainable world. So I have the privilege to introduce you today to our moderator and my past mentor from the International Space University, uh, Dr. Alisa Hadai, uh, a Space for Women mentor, who will present our featured panelists and UNUSA mentor today. Ms. Basuti Gerci Bolo, a space scientist and chair at the Educational Technologies at Africa University in Zimbabwe, and uh, panelist Ms. Kathy Nolan, an attorney at Analytical Space, and Mr. Remco Timmermans, CEO of media agency 17 Media. Thank you everyone for your participation today and welcome to Space for Women series number six, Alisa, the mic is all yours. The floor is all yours. Thank you very much, Hien, and thank you all for joining. I'm incredibly excited to introduce you to Remco, to Basuti, and to Kathy. They are fantastic people. The reason why we asked us to talk to us today is because they have very different kinds of backgrounds, and that's what the space world is about. You're going to talk to a space lawyer, you're going to talk to a social media expert and a CEO, and you're going to talk to someone who's pretty much changing the world in Africa. And I'm just very excited to welcome you, Remco, Basuti, and Kathy. I will quickly introduce uh, Basuti Bolo before leaving her the floor for about 10 minutes so that she can uh, tell us more about her space career and her background and the challenges that she faced. Uh, I'll move on to Kathy and then Remco. And some of the lead questions that I will ask them today are first, how they entered the space industry? How do you end up working in such, such a world and also in those different disciplines? And what are the challenges that you faced and how did you overcome them? I will also ask them how the you know, especially in these days, it's important to remember how you can uh, Im promote diversity and inclusiveness in your workplace and also just in your life. And finally, because a lot of our participants we have, we're recording, that's what I'm hearing. Um, because we have a lot of participants prior to this episode who asked us, what should I put on my resume? Well, that's what we're going to ask those three experts. So first, I'm going to introduce you to Basuti Bolo. As Hien uh, previously uh, told you, she's the chair of educational technology at Africa University in Zimbabwe. Uh, she is a space scientist, let's be clear on that. And she's also starting a new initiative called Space for Women Africa Dreamers. And I know Basuti because she is also a Space for Women mentor from UNUSA. And she's a mentor and she wants to 
change the world. And the way she does this is that she aims to get more women and girls to study STEM programs and to enter the space sector in order to drive change and to manage resources that are linked to women's and girls in careers. Bolo has been mentoring women and girls and promoting STEM programs in Botswana, where she's from, and now as this chair educational technology at Africa University in Zimbabwe. She holds a master's degree in information system and in space and atmospheric science and a um, bachelor's degree in geographical information systems and has been working in the field of space science, technology and application for the past 15 years. So Basuti, how about you tell us a little bit more about your background, how you entered the space sector and what kind of challenges you faced and how you overcome them. Uh, thank you, Elsa. My name is Basuti Bolo. Uh, I was born in Botswana. I come from Botswana, but now I'm working at Africa University, SHA Educational Technologies. Uh, I'm going to share with you my journey, how I became a space scientist or to be interested in the space sector. Uh, when I was a child, I remember when I was about 18, eight years old, I, uh, I, I came to to make a, a, a picture for Yuri Gagarin. Then since ever that time, I wanted to become a, an astronaut because I was interested to be part of the system, why people go to the moon. So I wanted also to, 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 to see what is happening in the, moon, in the moon. But at that time I was a child, I was like um, motivated or by just a picture, but without knowing exactly at the end, maybe I'll be in the space, space sector. So during that time, uh, when I was at primary school, I used to be one of the best students in mathematics and science. So when it comes to social, uh, like social sciences, I was not interested much. So uh, after I finished my, my, my form five, that's when I started to be interested, like to where, how do I, I, I get into space? Then uh, my interest was to be a pilot. So at that time, you know, we didn't have like linkages. I didn't have a, a mentor or somebody to assist me. So I tried to apply and I never get any reply from, or from any institution. So it's later after that, I, I went to study GIS and remote sensing in the United Nations for my first degree. That's where I started now to do space application. And now I could see that now I was riding on my, on my, my dream. So after that, uh, I was employed by the Minister of Agriculture in Botswana, where I was doing space application on agriculture and uh, agriculture-related uh, issues. So then in 2010, I went to study at the United Nations Africa Regional Center to study postgraduate diploma in space and atmospheric science. So that's where now I started to enjoy my space career there. And ever since that time, I never go back because remember my country doesn't even have space center yet, but I didn't, uh, that thing didn't block me. My interest was like, I want to see myself sharing ideas, learning from others and uh, teaching others about space and how space can, be, can benefit uh, us in the world. So I started to do like on, online, uh, um, online courses with NASA and so on participating in NASA uh, competitions and so on, but sharing with other people in my country because I used to write articles maybe in the newsletters, uh, encouraging or advising the government that uh, they have to use space science uh, in, the in the country or introduce it at primary school. But that time it was since 20, um, it was since 2010. So I kept on doing that until uh, today, I, I became a chair educational technologies at Africa University. So at Africa Universities, they needed a, a technologies who can guide them on, on the new technologies like space, uh, space applications and manned area vehicles, like the use of drones to manage the resources. So that's how I came to be employed here and I'm happy to be here. Then after that, that's the time that when I uh, I applied for mentorship and here I'm uh, aiming at like, uh, I'm about to establish the network that I called Space for Africa Dreamers that will share with the all African countries and so on. 
So during my, my journey into space, I, had, I met some challenges, but the challenges that I met, main challenges is like inequalities in class, like the, there is this issue of uh, saying women can do much better than men, like boys, when it comes to mathematics and, the, and sciences. So I did well that sometimes I'll be the best student uh, yeah, in mathematics and science. And the other challenge when I was working is lack of financial support, like scholarship. Uh, I felt that the scholarship were given to other careers, like other programs, not space science, because uh, somebody will tell you that this is not important. So we just issue other, 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 other programs. So that's where I, I, I find challenges. So thank you very much. I'll share you in details later. Well, thank you so much, Basuti. And I find it incredibly interesting and inspiring that at the beginning, you know, you didn't have anybody being like, okay, here it is, here's the path, join me. You just had to build your own path and you had to fight for yourself. But now that you're in a position where you can help, you are creating that path for others and helping others and empowering others uh, through your new initiatives to, to join the space sector. Uh, as a woman, as a woman scientist, and as a woman scientist in Africa. So thank you again for being here. I will um, move on to the two other speakers before we open the floor for um, Q&A for everybody to ask questions to Basuti, Remco, and, and Kathy. And now I will introduce you to Kathy Nolan. And so we are moving from space science to space law, which as you know, is a wonderful topic. Um, Kathy Nolan is a Boston-based corporate attorney at Analytical Space. She's an expert in providing structure and processes for high growth venture-backed startup companies during their periods of rapid expansion. Specializing specifically in building a legal department from the ground up, as well as establishing related legal operations, HR operations, and equity operations. She creates efficiency out of chaos for high-tech startups. That's who Kathy is. And in addition to that, she's a fantastic speaker. So I cannot wait to give you the floor, Kathy. Tell us more about your space career, the challenges that you might have faced, and also how you overcome them. Yeah, yeah, that's a good question. So getting into the space industry um, is not something people talk about very often. You know, they talk about how great it is once they are already there. Um, but I was always sort of interested in space because it seems really difficult, like one of the most difficult industries that you could be in. And I've always been drawn towards technical challenges that are far more difficult than, you know, as an example, creating, uh, you know, comfy shoes or creating something that is just not, not as difficult. Um, but in terms of how to make the leap and to get into the industry, the good news is the barrier to entry for developing, launching, and operating hardware in space is, is definitely going down. Um, and space companies are popping up all over the place because the barrier to entry is decreasing. So if you're interested in getting into space, the definite plus is it's never been easier because there's never been so many opportunities in space. Um, but I think when you do make your move from you know, non-space to the space industry. Something I did is to think critically about what part of the industry you're joining. So you're not just joining the space industry, you're joining the government piece or the commercial piece. You're joining, you know, if you do the company piece, it's either an international company or a national company. You're joining a software solution or a hardware solution. So what sector you pick will really affect your experience. Um, and on one end, you have the government, which is very secure. It's very well funded. You have money to do things that you could never even dream of if you weren't with the government. Um, but on the other hand, it's slow moving. It's very steady in its progress. And then at the opposite end of the scale, you have the startup sector, which is the sector I have ultimately chosen. And a lot of times it's the, it's the cutting edge of technology. Some of these companies, when they're founded, they don't even know if the technology that they're trying to use will even work. They're really pushing the envelope, but it's really risky. So these companies are actually trying to figure out their product as they're building it. They're also trying to figure out a customer that might be interested in buying the product 
at the same time that they're building it. Um, so because they don't have an established revenue model, they could go out of business any day. And then somewhere in the middle of this scale, you have large established companies. The other choice that you have is software versus hardware. So most people, when they think of space, they immediately think of hardware companies. So, you know, creating the actual satellites that take serious capital um, to put into space. But because it's more expensive, you, if you're an engineer or, you know, a business development person trying to brainstorm and think of new ideas, they take longer iteration times. They take more approval, more testing, more thinking about things because you just can't burn through the capital to make a satellite that doesn't work. Whereas in software, there actually is a decent amount of software solutions that are space companies. There are companies creating things like data platforms, location and tracking, mapping and monitoring for the space sector. And these software companies will move faster. You can make mistakes, you can fix them. It's really a breakneck speed. The saying is move fast and break things. And if you're not breaking things, you're not moving fast enough. So I think that's something to think about when you're getting into the space industry. It's not just getting into space. It's what part or what sector of space are you getting in? And then the last thing that I would say is um, something that I face personally is not having a space background. Um, so don't let a non-space background hold you back because passion will overcome know-how every single time in the job search. When you're in the interview process and you get to the part where the manager or the boss or the person you're actually working for is interviewing you, remember, they're not looking for someone that knows everything. They're looking for someone that's excited and positive and has that energy to go to work every day and say, I might not have ever done this before, but I'll figure it out and I'll get it done. So if you can show that you're excited about space and you're not the person who's going to, right, everyone has this person in their workspace, they complain all week about how hard their job is and they can't wait to go home on Friday. If you prove that you're not that person, they'll really appreciate that. And, and they know that you can learn anything on the job because they've learned things on the job. These space executives that will be interviewing you, there's no school or degree on how to be a space executive. They learned it on the job and, and they know that, that you can too. So getting your foot in the door, in my experience, has been a lot about passion. That's wonderful to hear. And I mean, I can see it uh, every time you meet space colleagues. They come from any kind of background and they're not, I mean, it doesn't mean anything to be a space person. Everybody who loves space is a space person. If you have that passion and then you find you know, where you want to work and what you want to do. You're a space person. You don't need any specific kind of a degree. That's a very good thing to, to remind our audience. And one of the things that you talked about is pretty much the level of risk, right? How you picked where you ended up working was what kind of risk and the, the downside and the good side of those risks were. So in the company that you're in right now, what brought you to say, okay, I'm going there and I have to build everything from the ground up, but uh, this is the risk I'm, I'm taking because a lot of startups end up failing. So when you picked where you wanted to work, how did you make that decision? Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, and the statistic you always hear in the US is 90% of US startups will fail in the first 365 days. Um, so, you know, the, the first thing is analytical space had been around for, I think, three years when I joined it. So that's already, you know, a, a positive sign that, you know, they're, they're tested and, and they've sort of made it through the crucible. Um, but the other thing is just the level of impact that you're able to have at such a tiny company. You know, it's, it's certainly higher risk, but it's also higher reward. So, um, I would not be able to make as much impact as a, at a company that had, you know, a small law firm inside the company, you know, 30 lawyers, each working on one thirtieth of the problems. Um, it's definitely higher pressure, higher stress, but the, the reward is, is really, it, it makes everything worth it. Thank you so much, Kathy. I will turn back to you when we ask the more general questions in a little bit. And now I will welcome Remco Timmermans, um, who is a social media specialist for space uh, and found, founder and CEO of me, the media agency 70 Media. 
He's running a cool social media campaign for several space clients. He's also the volunteer CEO because why being CEO of just one thing? Uh, he's the other is the CEO of Space Up Foundation and an advisor and event admin for spaceagenda.com. And by the way, if you haven't visited Space Agenda and you're wondering, are there any webinars about space right now these days? <laughs> yes, they are. <laughs> Go check out spaceagenda.com um, or contact Remco, he knows everything. Uh, he joined the space industry later in his career. This was very interesting because he came after having done an MBA and working in IT, finance, and Arctic expeditions for almost 20 years. And he participated in the International Space University Space Studies Program in 2013, and has been working in communication, marketing, and social media for space since. Uh, Remco is a U EU citizen with a Dutch passport, UK residency, and Estonian e-residency. And uh, Remco, I understand that you prepared some slides to tell us a little bit more about your background, your career, and how did you end up in, in the space world? I did, uh, Alyssa. Well, thank you for that introduction. Can you see my screen? Yes, I can. Okay, excellent. So, uh, so let me start because I have a lot of information. I've been I've been looking in the chat for uh, for a little while, and uh, I I hope to be answering quite a few questions. The presentation that I have prepared is very much against my own principles because there's a, a lot of information on the slides, but uh, I'll go through. Uh, some of these uh, uh, tips and uh, I hope that these slides will be made available afterwards because it's it's got way more information than anyone uh, can probably remember. But the interesting thing is it's based on uh, a few webinars that I've done before um, where people were asking questions in the chat, very similar questions to those that people are asking now. And I, I joined uh, uh, the Space for Women show last week and I, I actually copied the chat and uh, I tried to answer some of the questions about careers that came out of that one. Um, so yeah, as you correctly said, um, I'm, I'm very late to the space industry. I only joined about 10 years ago and uh, unfortunately I'm, uh, I'm a little bit older than uh, the average uh, person in this, uh, in, in, in this presentation. Um, so I was really late to the space show and, and that was really because um, like many people were saying back then in the 1980s and 1990s that uh, if you want to work in space, you have to be a space engineer. You have to be this rocket scientist uh, that is uh, really good at all these different equations, math and physics, and that wasn't me. So I very early on decided against a career in the space industry, and it wasn't until about 20 years later in my career that I got in touch with the space community through social media. I have a big passion for social media. Uh, I have a marketing background. And uh, I started experimenting with social media pretty early on, and I found this very vibrant space community. I found all these people who were not rocket scientists. They were just people like, well, like all of us with very different backgrounds uh, who had a passion for space. And many of them actually worked in the space industry. And that's where I realized that, hang on, maybe that choice that I made 20 years ago was wrong. And uh, let's just start all over again. And that's basically what I did. So uh, I went back to school after working 20 years in IT, in finance. Uh, I was a management consultant for a while, uh, specializing in banking and insurance. And um, I quit, I went back to school and basically started all over again. So what I'd like to do here is share with you some of my experiences, some of my attempts to get into the space industry. Um, and I'm really happy with what Kathy said be uh, because it, it's so true. Uh, it's, it's never been easier to join the space industry. It's never been more varied, it's never been more, uh, more present, and it's never been more welcoming than it is right now. And um, I'm, I'm, really see, I'm really happy to see examples here in, the, in this uh, webinar series of, uh, of people from such a variety of backgrounds who've actually made it into the industry. Um, so this is basically repeating the, um, uh, the introduction that you just did, um, Alyssa about my background, I'm Dutch living in the UK right now. My companies are based in Estonia uh, for, uh, for various uh, Brexit related reasons. Um, and um, I uh, have my own company. I'm basically the on, only employee in my uh, media agency and I specialize in doing uh, social media work for space clients. Um, so Let's move into this. Um, normally, I don't like slides filled with, with lots of text, but, uh, but let me rush you through. So these are my career observations. Um, so first of all, uh, we get lots of questions about diplomas. Diplomas matter, okay? Diplomas are really important. It matters what you do. 
but it doesn't really matter what you do, what diplomas you have, as long as you have them. Um, excitement and passion, as Kathy correctly said, is much more important than which diploma exactly you have. Bearing that in mind, if you're still in school, your future job in space or even out of space, but in space probably doesn't exist today. Uh, this is a very uh, highly developing industry, uh, lots of new technologies being developed and lots of new jobs being developed. So your future job probably does not exist yet uh, if you're still in school at the moment. Um, besides the, the knowledge that you gain in education, it's really important, but it's more about a way of thinking than the actual knowledge. The, 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 the knowledge itself loses about 30% of its use every year. So continuous education, uh, very important. And as I'm the prime example myself, it's never too late to change a career that doesn't make you happy. I wasn't happy in insurance and banking. Space is much cooler than banking. Um, so I made the switch, uh, even though it was late in my career and I'm, I've never been happier. Um, fun is really important. Uh, I want to have fun. I want to do things that interest me, that, um, that motivate me. Fun is, is one of the most underrated career objectives. Bear that in mind when choosing your career, because it should, it should really about what makes you happy. Uh, and if you do what you love, it sounds like an open door. It, it, it sounds really cheesy, but it's so true. If you do what you love, you won't work a single day in your life. I work seven days a week, not because I want to, but because, well, no, not because I have to, I should say, but because I want to. It doesn't feel like work. But here I am sitting on a Saturday sharing my passion. I love it. This doesn't feel like work at all. Um, and also very important, the magic happens outside your comfort zone. Again, it's one of these cheesy sayings, but it's so true. Just step out of your comfort zone, step towards these people that you admire, find a mentor who you may not know, but who may be able to help you. Uh, start all over again from school, just do it. Making these steps, uh, although it may feel frightening, that's where change happens, that's where, where these things happen. So focusing more specifically onto, onto careers in space. So um, I had a passion for space from a very early on, uh, early age. As a, as a small boy, I, I loved seeing rockets. I was really inspired by the first spaceship was going up the April 12th, 1981. I still remember sitting in between my parents on the sofa watching this magical machine going up and, and these two astronauts, uh, they, they became my immediate heroes. And I've, I've been extremely lucky that uh, I was able to meet uh, them much later on in my career. Um, I came for the rockets but the space industry is really all about the people. I came for the rockets, I stayed for the people because this is a very passionate industry where I at least found people uh, who think in a, in a similar way as I do. Space is all about passion. And um, as I said, I came from banking and insurance where the money is frankly a hell of a lot better. Space is not an industry to make you rich. They say, if you want to be a millionaire in space, start as a billionaire. Um, space is not an industry where you go uh, to make uh, fast money. If making money is your objective in life, then maybe banking and insurance is better. But if you want to have a passionate career um, where you can work on the, on, the, on the latest and the greatest and the future of, of humankind, if you like, then space is really for you. It's very international. Uh, I hear these questions from people in, in countries all over the world. Can I participate in space because my country is not involved or, or not yet involved in space? Of course you can. Space is very international. We see the people here in the call from all these countries around the world. And um, it's, 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 it's a global business. It's very international, it's very interdisciplinary as well. And that's really important to realize. And we see that in, in well, the example um, of Basuti, who's a scientist, Kathy, who's a lawyer, me, who's a marketeer. Uh, none of us are rocket engineers. Uh, but we have a career in space. It's very interdisciplinary. Space really is not just about rocket science. Maybe it was like that in the 50s and 60s, but they, those days are, are, are long gone and you don't have to be a rocket scientist to, uh, to work in space. And the good thing is space is a growing industry. Maybe not the same in every country. I, I moved to the UK because there's lots of opportunities in space here, but the space industry all over the world will need thousands of new people. Um, in, in, in the next decade alone. And I foresee that will only grow. And, and COVID-19, how serious the impact may be, is just a hiccup in the development of the space industry because the space industry is really focusing on the long term. Uh, we need people from all backgrounds and countries. And I cannot emphasize this enough that people need, that space needs people with any background, whether you're a lawyer, whether you're a scientist, whether you're an engineer, whether you're a marketeer, whether you're an artist, it doesn't matter. If you have the passion for space, 
there is a place for you. Um, and, and, and literally, as what, what Cathy was saying, becoming active in space is, is easier than ever, and it's also easier than you may think. And that's my next two slides. I'll, I'll rush through uh, a long list of tips. There is a, space in, uh, a place in space for everyone, really. Um, so some career tips, and again, this might even be too small to read, but let me just rush you through to give you some ideas on how to turn your CV into a space CV. Um, it's important to build a space network early, and there's lots of opportunities to create a network, to become part of, of, of um, a network in space. Most jobs, and, and everybody who has uh, a job knows that, uh, most jobs are found through your network not so much through uh, vacancies that you find on website or, or in newspapers. Your network is what will help you to find that, uh, that job in space. And there are lots of networks that you can become a member of. Uh, we have uh, SEDS, the Students for the Exploration and Development of Space, which is active in, in several countries around the world. We have um, one that I particularly like a lot, the Space Generation Advisory Council, which is kind of the young professionals arm of the United Nations Office for Outer Space Affairs. They uh, are an observer in Anusa in Copulus and uh, are extremely active in all countries around the world, really. So, so look them up. Uh, Women in Aerospace uh, has very active uh, groups in the US, in Europe, in Mexico, in Canada. Uh, very valuable network. All places where you can find, um, find cool people to connect to who can help you. And that really brings me to the next point is, is get in touch with us. Get in touch with people who work in space, who you admire, who work in an area of space uh, that you're interested in and, and find them, use them as a mentor. Uh, space for Women is a mentor network. All these, uh, these, these professional women here are looking uh, to help people. That's why they become part of, of a mentor network. And it's not just this network, uh, there's loads of people all around the world who may be in the job that you want to be in in 10 years, well, get in touch with them. Um, space is a very people-friendly industry. Uh, we want to reach out to people, we want to help you. So just reach out to these people to help you. Um, we often hear that, well, my country's not active in space, I can't really do anything, but that's not true. Um, many organizations are international and if there's no space organization in your country, well, help start it yourself. I, I have great examples of friends of mine from Costa Rica, the project Irazu, look it up um, on, on the internet. There was nothing in Costa Rica for space. These people had a passion for space, yet didn't want to leave Costa Rica. They built their own, their own uh, space project. Same in Estonia, a group of passion students built the first Estonian cube satellite and launched it. And it's still active in space. It's a, it's a brilliant example of how a group of people came together and basically kick-started the space industry in a country like Estonia. The same in Mauritius. I was there last year for an STC event. Uh, they, they're launching their first um, satellite um, based at a university. So again, you can be that first uh, person that starts space activities um, in your country if, if, uh, if there's nothing there. Um, some niche specializations. You don't have to build satellites. Uh, there's loads of other things. We've seen a great example uh, from Cathy as a, as a lawyer. Space law is a growing um, um, industry uh, within the legal field. Um, space and STEM communications, like myself, I'm a communicator, I'm a marketeer. Um, so there's lots of jobs there. Data science, um, Cathy talked about startups. If I look at it from a European point of view, most of the space startups and most of the opportunities in the funding is in data. It's not in hardware, but it's really in earth observation data, in communications data, in all kinds of data that is freely available uh, for you to build your business uh, on. So space data science is a really big uh, job motor and startup motor, at, at least here in Europe, but I'm sure all around the world. There's things like space medicine, uh, space art, space architecture. There's, there's loads of stuff and, and whatever your specialization is, there is very likely to be a space element to it that you can think of. Um, space events, um, Alyssa already mentioned it, uh, go to spaceagenda.com for everything going on, not just because I'm an admin there, but because webinars offer a great opportunity to uh, find like-minded people, uh, to join a network, to find people you can, uh, you can connect to and, um, um, and, and, and get advice. Um, why not organize your own webinar? Uh, all the live events have been cancelled and it looks like we won't have much in the, in, in the months to come. So 
Organizing a webinar is super simple. You already have the technology, otherwise you wouldn't be able to join our webinar today. Um, transition from another industry, if you don't feel you're comfortable in the space world uh, as a space professional straight away, if you're just a hobbyist, but you have this passion and you want to join in from another industry, that's what I had. I felt I needed some more knowledge and, and uh, some self-confidence mostly. I went back to school. And for me, it was the International Space University that did it. I went to the summer school uh, um, now uh, seven years ago, and the summer program of ISU changed everything for me. And it gave me the confidence that I needed to act as a professional and to combine my professional knowledge from my previous career into space. It gave me the language, if you like, to uh, be able to function in, in the space industry. That for me was a, was a, was a big game changer. So another page, this is the last page. Um, something I, I really enjoy doing uh, that's very easy to participate in a hackathon. Uh, and, and everybody, well, lots of people think that you need to be an IT whiz and a, and a, and a, and a programmer to participate in hackathons, but hackathons are just like real small businesses. Uh, they need people with a business background who think customer instead of thinking product or solution. You need designers, you need creative people, you need marketeers in order to participate in these hackathons, form a team and just create a great product in one or two days and, and showcase it to a bunch of investors. And who knows, you plant a seed for your own startup. And, and that's really the, the next step. Um, if you're thinking of maybe doing your own thing in space, there is a lot of support available. Uh, there's uh, this, these things called space incubators, the ESA Business Incubator Network, the Copernicus Incubator Network. And as I'm from Europe, I'm most familiar with what's available in Europe, but this is available all around the world. And I'm sure Kathy can help you uh, when, when it's about uh, her part of the world. Uh, where do you find this support? Well, there's, there's a lot available. And the good thing is uh, it's not just logistic and technical support, there's also financial support uh, available. If you have a good idea, there is money out there to help you develop your idea into a small business um, and, and, and really explore these options. Uh, competitions uh, is another way to do it. Uh, here in Europe, we have the Copernicus and Galileo Masses. These are space data competitions. If you have a good idea for Earth observation or satellite navigation applications, by all means, register. The deadline is the end of June, so uh, we're right into it at the moment. Uh, register your idea um, and, and who knows, uh, you'll get a lot of help in developing your idea and maybe win this competition. And when you win this competition, a whole roller coaster happens and before you know it, you'll have your own small business. Um, but you can also start like, uh, like I did, uh, volunteering. Um, I became a volunteer at the World Space Week Association. Later, I became a volunteer at, uh, at the Space Foundation, which I'm now the CEO of. Um, there's lots of places where you, that, that are looking for volunteers to join. Uh, SGAC I already mentioned, uh, but there's also all these different space societies, the Planetary Society, the British Interplanetary Society, uh, Solar System Ambassadors, Rocketry Clubs, Astronomy Clubs. There's loads of places where you can volunteer, get to know people, get your hands dirty on, uh, on, 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 on space stuff and uh, really build that, uh, that space CV that way. Um, and one really good tip that I heard last week, and I've, I've actually been involved in it a little bit a few years ago myself as well, that uh, we heard about last week in, in the Space for Women show is uh, analog astronauts. I mean, everybody wants to be an astronaut, but mm, admit it, becoming an astronaut is still fairly difficult and chances of you succeeding are fairly small. But um, there's loads of organizations who are looking for volunteer uh, analog astronauts. So they'll, they'll be putting you on the moon or on Mars, um, but in a much easier and slightly simulated way to collect knowledge that is needed for human space exploration uh, in, in, in a decade or two. And, and there's lots of really cool initiatives. Um, Alessio and I are really, really familiar with a few because they're very close to the International Space University. Uh, there's the Austrian Space Forum uh, who runs uh, several analogs every year. There's the Mars Society that runs the MDRS, the Mars Desert Research Station in Utah, quite famous uh, with, with many of us. There's DMARS, uh, who has a similar setup in Israel. There's Lunaris, who, has, uh, um, uh, who, who runs simulations uh, from Poland. Uh, so there's lots of, uh, of ways to uh, become an astronaut fairly quickly. So uh, check out these websites.
So what I've done on the next slide, and I'm just going to rush through in, in, in 10 uh, seconds because I'm way over time. We might <laughs> run out of time right now, but they can. They will. We will post all of your slides. If yeah, you have, exactly. if you get the last points, go for it. Yeah. But otherwise, we really <laughs> open for the Q and A. <laughs> yeah. No, that's fine. There's one more point. I'll spend two seconds on showing you all these links, and I'll put them out there later on. I wasn't going to go through all these web links anyway. Uh, but if you have any questions, please link with me uh, through uh, LinkedIn. Or, or through Twitter, and uh, I'll be happy to help you. Thank you very much, and sorry for overrunning my time. No, 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 it's perfect uh, on the chat. Uh, if you didn't see a lot of people uh, indicated how helpful this was, and same for Kathy and for Basudi. So thank you to uh, our three panelists because it shows different ways of entering the industry and the things that you can do within the industry. And uh, Remco gave a similar presentation last week, and I watched it as a participant and thought it was so good. It had to be. <laughs> On the Space for Women show. So thank you really mu very much. And we will uh, share those slides because all those links are incredibly helpful. I, uh, during when he made the presentation himself, and I'm I have my job. I'm in the space world, and I think I'm I'm okay right now a little bit. But I took screenshots of his slides <laughs> because it was so good, and I wanted to follow his advice. And um, I think that's also a thing, I saw it in the chat, um, we talk about the imposter syndrome, we talk about um, what kind of uh, thing you need to put on your resume, and one of the things that those three panelists have, you know, reiterate again and again is that there is a, a place for you, there is a space for you in space, haha. Um, I would, one advice that I would give personally, because I'm, uh, I'm reached out to for the Space for Women uh, initiative from UN USA, and I'll ask Basuti if she has a little bit of advice on that end too. Uh, when we're asked, what should I put on a message? Why, what should I say? Um, imagine if you're reaching out to people who you've just heard about in, in a talk, you just listened to them and they were fantastic, you know, reach out on LinkedIn, reach out on Facebook and a good, you know, way to start is, oh, I just listened to you and you said this and that, and that really resonated with me. How can I help? And if you are just reading an article or you're doing your own research and throughout your research, you're finding people who are very inspiring and that you want to reach out to, I think one thing that can show the person that you really care, that you really want to do something, is to do a tiny bit of background research. You don't need to do it when it's right after a talk because you've immediately listen to someone and you know what they're doing and you know what they're saying but if you found out the name of someone and you think they could be of interest to you before just reaching out to them and say hey i'm this and i don't know what to ask you you can just google them a little bit know a little bit about what they do and uh, then reach out and say i saw that you were doing this and that these are my interests could you point me in a certain direction and keep the message short and absolutely they will reach back to you so uh, two questions that I wanted to ask before uh, uh, the rest of the Q&A from the, from the audience. I think, thank you Remco and, and Cassie and Basuti, I think you incorporated a lot of answers to the questions in the chat, so that's fantastic. Um, one thing that we talked about for the past three weeks are those uh, social issues all around the world and uh, you see how it's being, uh, how the US is being shook right now. And I was wondering, one of the messages that you all uh, gave us is that there is a huge diversity in the space sector and uh, and there's a diversity in disciplines and there's a diversity in just the people who are part of the space sector but what did you do maybe throughout your career to increase to build some inclusiveness to build some diversity of, of your own uh, so i'm going to ask you basuti first um, what 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 have you done throughout your career to make it an open environment and and help people to come in? Yeah, thank you, Elsa. Uh, for me, ever since uh, I joined the space career, uh, I'm always mentoring uh, women and girls and everyone who is interested in in space sector. Even though those who are not interested, sometimes they ask me. Why are you doing this? Where are you going to get a job? And what, what, why are you interested in space? So I, I explain to them, I, I explain to them. And normally when they are uh, STEM uh, fairs, a, a career fairs like maybe STEM education uh, fairs, I, 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 I join those, those fairs, then I present to the students 
sometimes I go to primary schools like where I was, I started my primary school, I, I encourage uh, those girls to, 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 to study hard in, in, in social sciences, even STEM, so that they can uh, venture into space sector. Because if we look at, uh, if you look at, look at the future, we find that space is going to be a, a program that will be used by all. Like, as you can see now, it is uh, used to achieve the, the sustainable development goals. And each and every country, region, or uh, region and uh, every sector, we, we have to use space to achieve the sustainable development goals. And sometimes I, I also spo sponsor best student in mathematics and uh, science uh, subjects just to encourage them to, to, to study hard and also to, to, to I share with them that um, I, I, I started at primary school doing the best so for them to aim high looking at uh, what I am today I started doing it at uh, the primary school that I started there that I was here so you see today I'm here maybe a chair educational technology in another country so you must follow my uh, my steps or follow your dreams as well though you are in another region or in another country you can end up uh, being in in any country whether developed or developing country to teach other people to share ideas so that's what i do to encourage them and also to women because you see uh, i'm a woman but i never get discouraged by anything uh, they must follow you must follow your dream you must also like be focused don't be uh, shaken by other things you know if you are a woman you do work at home you find that the children, everything is you, but you do your job well, you make sure that you plan well and you do the best for your children, do the best for your family and the best for yourself also. So that's what I can say oh, to that's them. That's great advice. Uh, yeah. I, before I ask Kathy and, and Remco, I'm actually gonna combine those questions so that we have more time. Can, do you have any advice for something that you're looking for in a resume when you someone is reaching out to you and they're like oh here's my cv here's my resume are there any things that you, th you when you look at a resume you're thinking okay that's that was a good idea to put that in uh, i will look at uh, the, um, the initiative what like what do that person like amy at are you willing to share ideas or to learn that's the most important thing does the person have the passion for something? Because passion is very important than the, the qualification that somebody has. Because somebody, if doesn't have pa passion and he have some maybe first classes in another program, sometimes he can't do it. So that's what I'm looking at. Thank Great. you. Thank you, thank you, Vasuti. Um, Kathy, I think uh, Vasuti brought back the, the the point that it's important to be passionate. So my the first part of the question is uh, what has happened within your space career and how could you have uh, how did you promote diversity and inclusiveness? And the second part is that you can put us first part if you want. Um, what kind of things when you look at a resume you're thinking oh that was a good thing to put in? Yeah. So uh, starting with sort of the diversity and inclusiveness question. Uh, I'm just gonna reframe the question a little bit. I know the panel is mostly about how to get into the space sector, but I think it's a really positive thing to look further into the future. And assuming that you are successful, you do get into the space sector, what can you do going forward to promote diversity and inclus inclusiveness in your space career? Um, and regardless of where you are in the space industry, you know, government, commercial, startup, or, you know, very large company. I think things that everyone should have at the top of their mind is starting with the beginning of the recruiting cycle and working your way into um, an employee's experience. The first thing would be recruiting and hiring inclusively. So educating yourself in industry best practices when it comes to reviewing resumes, as well as how to inclusively interview candidates. Um, and then the next piece would be working to educate yourself on how to create an inclusive workplace, um, which will really have a big impact on employee engagement and retention. Um, another thing to think about is allyship in the workplace. So thinking about how it's really not enough to be a bystander, learning and understanding how to act as an ally. Um, other things to keep at the front of your mind are recognizing and responding to microaggressions um, and also running inclusive meetings. 
and, and don't feel like you're alone in trying to implement these concepts and making these theories a reality. Um, you should feel free to call in the experts to help get an outside perspective and an education for yourself and your team about how you can really promote diversity and inclusiveness. So in our, or I should say, in, in my particular slice of the space industry, the startup industry, uh, She Geeks Out is really a thought leader in this space and they run training and workshops on these topics. You can constantly be getting better at doing these things. Um, and, and even if you, you know, aren't running a, a space company and, and you don't have a, a budget to engage them, they have a lot of free resources on their website. So you can check them out at shegeeksout.com. In terms of uh, the second question for what advice I would give participants to build their space careers and strengthen their resumes, I would definitely echo what Remco said 100% find other people that are interested in space and get to know them. So whether it's in person at the university or the alumni space club, whether it's on LinkedIn or the blogging community, you have to find people that are interested in talking and writing about space because those are the people that are going to help you get into the space industry. And that's actually how I got into the space industry. So I met Analytical Space when it was a fledgling company, had just started up. Um, I, I obviously work somewhere else. And the founders really struck me as people who are insightful and deeply interested in making a difference in space. So I kept in touch with them um, for almost three years. And, and at one point, uh, one of the founders called me up and said, I need someone at analytical space that you know, has a similar skill set to yours. And the rest is history. The other piece is reading space news. Um, so in our, in our little corner of the world, we use spacenews.com, but there, there are a bunch of others. You just have to pick your preferred one and absolutely stay up on what's happening. Also examine why do you want to get into space? So what is it about space that just really catches your interest? And this will change how you join space. Um, so once you know your why, you can strategize on your how, and you can decide you want to join the, you know, the building piece, so building of satellites and software. Do you want to, build, to join the launching piece, the data analysis piece, the downlink piece? You can kind of decide based on your interest what piece of space. Um, and something that might be useful to attendees is every year, Seraphim Capital puts out a space tech map. Um, so it's spelled S-E-R-A-P-H-I-M, Seraphim Capital. And if you Google them and then Space Tech Map 2020, they have spent an outrageous amount of time essentially mapping every single space company that, you know, above a certain amount of money and, and a certain amount of fame threshold and group them by uh, industry. So once, once you know why, you can, you can kind of go through that map and that might help you as a starting point. Um, and then the last piece, which is like very granular and concrete, is a, a lot of people think on their resumes, if you're applying to a space company, you need to, to write something about, you know, I want to be in space. But I want to be in space will get you nowhere on your resume unless you take it a step further and you explain why you want this type of space. So why you want this type of corporate or government environment is really important. Um, I lead hiring in analytical space and a lot of people just haven't thought this through. So as an example, if I'm hiring for a launch company, um, I'm doing launch space launches all day. I'll ask you why space in the interview. I'll be looking for, you know, why space on your resume, but the answer shouldn't be just like, you know, space is cool. It should answer why the launching piece of space is interesting to you as opposed to the building piece, the data analysis piece, the downlink uh, piece, your, your why should also be customized to the company or organization you're applying to and explain why this private company over a government entity. So you can really tailor the statements to who you're interviewing with to make an, a bigger impact. Those are such good advice. I hope you're listening. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm, I want to take notes while I'm listening to you guys. Um, I wish I had more time. Um, Remco, I think in your presentation, you also gave uh, your thoughts on, you know, the ways you can be involved in, and you talked about diversity. Uh, we are five minutes away from the end of the show. So I'll very quickly ask you if there's any piece of advice for something that you think, you know, people um, could put on the resume that would be helpful to them. And then I'll uh, give the floor back to Hien for the final quotes, the final picture. And I can see exactly like uh, the talk on, on space law, there's a lot uh, of questions that we were unable to answer from the chat. So we're, uh, we'll try to extract them from the chat, try to follow up with the, uh, with the speakers to see if we can get some answers to you in our in our final report. But thank you uh, for to all the participants who are asking those questions. I, I keep an eye on them. They're very interesting. Some of them are more personal than others, and we want to help all of you. But I hope you understand that uh, with this uh, short amount of time, uh, sometimes we can't address uh, all of them. So Remco, final thoughts uh, on maybe things to add to your resume? Yeah, real briefly, uh, and I, I can only connect to what Basuti and Kathy have, have said before, and I'm, I'm, I'm not going to repeat what they said. One of the things that I look at, uh, at resumes and, and that I find important uh, when I assess uh, people coming into the industry is, is have you demonstrated uh, that you have a true interest and a true passion and, a, and, and that you can uh, contribute to uh, to whatever job you're 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 applying for. So demonstrating it rather than uh, just saying it, uh, demonstrating it in action. Action says a lot more than 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 words. I think so. Uh, that for me would would be the most important, and and that connects to to my presentation and what Kathy just said is there are so many ways to demonstrate your passion, to demonstrate your your interest, your true interest. Uh, through actions, through joining uh, certain organizations and, and, and doing, undertaking certain activities as a volunteer uh, or in any, in any other shape or form. Um, that, that to me is, is the way to really filter out those very passionate people that the space industry needs. Thank you so much, Tremco. Now that I have you, do you have a favorite space quote? Ooh, you put me on the spot there. Um, um, but yeah, the, the, it was part of my presentation and I, I very truly believe in that just because I'm such an example of it myself, there's a place in space for everyone. Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> no idea who came up with that, by the way. I don't know if it... I'll say well, you. <laughs> whoever it is. No, 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 it's definitely not me. I stole it from someone, but I don't know who to credit here. Uh, what about you, Basuti? Do you have a favorite space quote? Uh, a favorite space book? Uh, yes, I, yeah. I, I, I love the Space for Sustainable Development. That's the book that I love to read. Thank you. Ah, I like it. I like it a lot. How about you, Kathy? I'm going to have to stick with the classics. Space, the final frontier. Ooh, that's good. <laughs> Well, thank you all. Thank you, panelists, for this wonderful talk. Uh, again, uh, thank to all the participants for your fantastic questions. We will follow up uh, on them. Uh, we'll save the chats and, and follow up with the, with the panelists to, to get you as many answers as we can. And uh, Ian, I think I turn back to you for the final picture. Yes, uh, I would just like to add on on the presentation. Thank you, everyone. Um, let's keep this very simple. I'm sharing this from what I've observed over the years and uh, how mentees, the problems, I always try to turn it in terms of uh, mentees' problems and try to really understand and put myself into their shoes. Uh, just keep it very simple. I'm not a recru rec recruiter, but I uh, interview a lot of people. I get pitched a lot every day on social media and all channels. I understand the problems. Let's, uh, if we simplified it, uh, just be aware that 80% of your success is mindset. It's only 20% a skill set. So when you personally reach out, you asked for a scholarship, uh, and, or you said only three CVs, uh, and you got three and give up, it has nothing to do with your skill set. We see everyone being extremely successful out there. They don't have any, uh, you know, the most bold, uh, successful um, uh, uh, space companies, SpaceX, Elon Musk, Jeff Bezos, and Richard Branson, zero, zero skill set. 
all mindset, persistence. When I have a CV in front of me, I do not care what your background is. I look at you, I stand to your eyes. Who is this person in front of me? Where does this person want to go? Are you and me aligned on the same mission, vision? How hungry are you? Uh, and if you sit there in, uh, and, and get interviewed, I was literally sitting there over the boardroom of a space agency company, you know, put yourself in their shoes, you know, are you aligned with their, uh, with their, uh, with their uh, uh, moonshot or their, their mission? You know, I see a lot of young mentees, they, they, they are dying. They want, they want to work for someone, for a company at meaning and purpose. Business as usual is obsolete. So if this company does not provide you and stand strong for you of who you truly are, you know, so when you walk into that interview, just, you know, one of my mentors, he once said, when you are being the you that you feel you should be and don't try to prove to anyone anything and you shine your light, that's when you are going to win. Mm. You know, so try to fail more often. Passion, uh, perseverance I'm looking for. Um, you know, and uh, just know who you are, like, feel that push and that pull, who you would like to work for, where you would commit, you know, half of your life. Uh, and then uh, go for it. Fail more often. <laughs> That's it. Thank you so much, everyone. Um, we will follow up on all questions. Uh, you will receive a written report. You will receive the Q&A for all those questions that we could not answer you. The next series we will go a little bit deeper also into the diversity matter with uh, someone from the European Space Agency. Uh, but stay tuned, you know, um, and uh, follow up on the social media we have now our Space for Women Facebook site, Instagram and Twitter. And if you would like to have any themes covered, please do let us know. And if you decide to connect with a mentor, please do that via the UNOSA website. And then uh, let's build a beautiful future together. Thank you, everyone, and have a beautiful weekend. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Well.